You're watching WKYT News at Noon. Good afternoon. Welcome back to WKYT News. We're about to hit 1230. It's a good day to keep your eye on the weather. That's right. We have some showers and storms moving in later today. Some of those storms could be strong or severe. The wind already picking up. WKYT meteorologist Jim Caldwell is tracking it for us right now. You know, we're getting all kinds of uh, feedback from uh, social media folks saying, hey, these winds are pretty rough out here, blowing cars all over the place, small cars, large vehicles as well. They get caught up with a little more wind. And when you're dealing with wind gusts like we're seeing right now, 41 miles per hour here in Lexington recorded a little while ago, then you can see why, especially when it's coming uh, straight out of the south. So folks traveling along Interstate 64 or some of the east-west roads out there, they're going to be feeling more of these strong winds as they travel. Then we're tracking these showers and even a few thunderstorms. Most of it's still showing up uh, west of our area there, out toward the Louisville, and will continue sweeping into central portions of Kentucky as we progress through the day. That's the uh, main energy. What we have is a frontal boundary. Look at what's behind this front, by the way, snow. Best chances for severe weather still showing up over extreme southern sections of Kentucky as we advance through the rest of the evening here. But we're talking shower storms, maybe a small chance of local severe weather, and that means we're getting some of those severe thunderstorm warnings, or at least the criteria. And wind gusts out ahead of it, already close to this 45 miles per hour. We're going to track all of this hour by hour coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, we'll see you then in the news now. Two days after the terrorist attacks in Brussels, Belgium, authorities are continuing to search for suspects. And they're finding more and more clues, getting them closer to the people responsible for Tuesday's bombings. Saima Mosen begins our top story team coverage with the latest developments. Two days after the attacks on Brussels, and authorities are starting to piece together clues to unravel the terrorist network responsible. Investigators have identified Najim Lashrawi, pictured on the left of this surveillance photo, as a second suicide bomber at the airport. Lashrawi was a bomb maker who was wanted in connection with the Paris attacks. According to a Belgian security source, authorities are searching for a second unidentified bomber involved in the metro attack. The suspect was spotted holding a large bag on surveillance cameras at the station. This comes as another Paris attack suspect, Salah Abdesalam, ceases to cooperate with Belgian police, according to his lawyer. He's also requesting extradition to France for trial, an abrupt change since his arrest last Friday. I think his explanation, he has to give them there uh, and not in Belgium. Abdesalam is connected to the other Brussels attackers, Ibrahim and Khalid Bakrawi. Authorities say Ibrahim left behind a will discovered on a laptop top near one of the locations raided on Tuesday. In it, he stated he needs to rush and no longer feel safe, that if he takes too much time, he would end up next to him in prison. Investigators believe it's a reference to Abdesalam. In Brussels, I'm Saima Morsin reporting. And still no sign of a Lexington native and her husband missing after the attacks. Stephanie and Justin Schultz were in the Brussels airport when the bombs went off there yesterday. Their families say yesterday they received false information that the couple had been found in a hospital. Justin's mother is headed to Brussels today to help with the search. You don't really know how to explain or describe a situation until you go through it. You know, we've had so many people send out prayers and well wishes and, you know, thinking positive thoughts and stuff for us. And, you know, we appreciate all of that. And, you know, it's just kind of what's held everything together. The U.S. expedited Shell's passport to get her to Belgium quickly. The couple just dropped off Stephanie's mother at the airport so she could return home to Lexington when those bombs exploded. She's okay and remains in Brussels to search for them as well. The attacks have many people reconsidering plans to travel abroad. And if you cancel, you might end up out of luck when it comes to trying to get your money back. WKYT's Caitlin Sentner is continuing our top story team coverage with a look at what your options might be if you're a traveler. Today, a group of students from Fayette County will leave Lexington and travel to Europe. They'll go to London, Paris, Venice, and Rome. Meanwhile, Lincoln School, set to travel abroad next month, is talking about their plans tonight. After a terror attack in Brussels, Lincoln School Superintendent Karen Hatter says they're taking the situation very seriously and are trying to broaden options for travelers within the tour company. 
A group from Lincoln County High School has been planning to travel to Europe for more than a year. Most have spent several thousand dollars in prepayments getting ready for the trip. We talked with AAA about what options travelers do have if they want to back out of their European travel plans. And it turns out some do have options, but it's dependent upon the situation. Travel insurance will allow you to cancel for any reason up until the date. Um, but for, for travel providers in the general sense, it it's varies greatly. Here at the Bluegrass Airport, there is a larger police presence, but we're told the increased security shouldn't impact travelers. In Lexington, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. And there is a website where you can see current travel alerts. We have a link to that at WKYT.com. Barb? One lane of Interstate 64 West is closed near the Bath Rowan County line because of a deadly crash. State police say a driver appeared to have a blowout, had a blowout tire and was stopped in the fast lane when a semi hit the car. The driver died. A passenger is at UK Hospital in critical condition. The semi driver was not seriously hurt. A former police officer involved in a suspected DUI crash is now facing criminal charges. Ryan Hundley is charged with assault, wanton endangerment, and DUI following a crash in February in Danville. Hundley has since resigned from the Danville Police Department. WKYT's Phil Pendleton has more on the indictment. Well, according to these court records, Officer Ryan Hundley, former Officer Hundley, had a blood alcohol content of .101 when he was in that crash on February the 26th. Now, police say the crash happened on Kentucky 2168 when Hundley's Mustang collided with a truck driven by Dwayne Brown. Hundley, Brown, and another person were injured. Hundley was indicted by a Boyle County grand jury on charges of assault, wanton endangerment, and DUI. According to an affidavit, police say Hundley's 2000 Ford Mustang lost control, crossed the center line, and hit a Dodge Ram. Police in that report said that Hundley initially told them he was not the driver, but the other passenger said Hundley was, in fact, the driver. Police say all three people were injured and there was significant damage to both vehicles. Now, some witnesses that were working in a nearby field told police that they thought they heard what sounded like a race car and then a loud collision. And then another witness who apparently was behind the Mustang said that after it went through the roundabout, it took off at a very high rate of speed and then they lost sight of it and then the crash happened. In Boyle County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. And police have issued search warrants for the data recorder in the Mustang to get a better idea of the vehicle operation and speed at the time. Deputies have released the names of three people involved in a police chase. Kurt Antrobus, Joseph Rochetti, and Jared Wood are all charged with wanton endangerment. The Bourbon County Sheriff's Office says they admitted to firing a gun while driving with no intended targets. Deputies and the police in Paris chased them to Georgetown, where Georgetown police helped stop them. Lexington introduced the city's first female fire chief this morning. Chief Kristen Chilton has been with the Lexington Fire Department for 23 years. She first became interested in firefighting in 1990 during a visit to Fire Station 1, where she met Lexington's first female firefighter and paramedic. She begins work as chief immediately. Individual commitment to a group effort. Everyone benefits when everyone contributes, and that's what makes Lexington a great community, one that I'm proud to serve. Thank you. Children has a bachelor's degree from Transylvania University, a master's degree from Eastern Kentucky, and is certified as an emergency medical technician and a hazardous materials specialist. And now she is our chief. Right. Uh, lots of credentials and experience and, uh, of course, uh, is on the job now. That's what we're hearing. All right. Author John Elliott tells us about his new book, On the Run in College Park. It explores topics uh, that are also in the headlines in our news. Also looking through the lens of contemporary art for tomorrow's Curator Conversation, next on WKYT. 
Want to be part of the new Big Brother? Here's your chance to make this dream come true. Friday, March 25th, WKYT will be holding an open casting call at the Sleep Outfitters in Woodhill Shopping Center. Think you have what it takes to be HOH? Or can you float your way to the top? This will be your opportunity to show Big Brother your big personality and tell them why you should be on summer's hottest reality show. WKYT presents the Big Brother Casting Call, March 25th from noon until 4 at the Sleep Outfitters in Woodhill Shopping Center. My car ended up here because someone was in a hurry and ran a red light. Someone was texting and driving, and their negligence brought me here. Some insurance companies don't want to pay you what you deserve. Your car gets crushed, and so do you. Car wreck, think big. Get the hammer. I was scared to go back to the dentist because I hadn't been in for a while. But they cut me some slack when they saw all this plaque, and they didn't make fun of my smile. I don't have insurance, but they didn't mind, which I thought was a setup for robbing me blind. But I financed my teeth, this toothpaste was free, and the numbing stuff really worked wonders on me. No insurance? With a free new patient exam and x-rays, plus extended financing available, dentistry's never been easier. Call 1-800-ASPEN-DENTAL. Hi, I'm Diana with Kevin's Carpets. We understand how hard it is to buy floors. That's why you need to come to the flooring experts and let Chad, Rebecca, and I help you with your flooring needs. Kevin's Carpets in Lexington and Georgetown. Why, you'd be crazy to buy flooring anyplace else. We're pleased to announce that we now have Honda in Richmond, which means you can shop and compare the four leading brands all in one location. So where else can you shop and compare the four best brands, be only minutes from Fayette County, work with one salesperson, and only have to have your car appraised once? For your convenience, out of respect for your time, we now offer Gates Honda, Gates Hyundai, Gates Nissan, and Toyota South, all on the bypass in Richmond. Did your family set a goal to become healthier in the new year? One family did and lost 300 pounds at Ageless. Bruce lost 92 pounds, Adam lost 64 pounds, and Catherine lost 151 pounds. For a medically supervised affordable weight loss solution, call Ageless today for a free consultation. Seems like every morning is the same work. Get the kids out the door with their steps so that they can get to school and I can get to work. Just sitting at a red light, I get hit from behind. I called in Daryl Isaacs, the hammer, and they handled it for me. Car wreck? Think big. Get the hammer. Get WKYT news and weather updates on Mix 94.5. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with meteorologist Jim Caldwell. Tracking a very windy Thursday out there as they have been, uh, we've been seeing winds crank up to right around 40 miles per hour. Some of the wind gusts over the past uh, little bit here and some of the headlines, those gusty winds are going to be pushing some storms into our area here as well. Much cooler as we head into your Friday. I mean, we're talking about a big dip in temperatures. Today, we're close to 70 degrees. Tomorrow, check this out. We're likely going to end up in the upper 40s and low 50s throughout most of the area. This particular run of the model showing all low 50s, but still a big time change, especially when you got used to what we've had out there. As we move forward here, we're talking 40 mile per hour wind gusts showing up here in Lexington. 41 to be exact. Same thing coming in in Frankfurt, and you've got more pushing 30 and beyond. And this is kind of the core of the wind, at least for us right now, out ahead of this system as it's driving through. Through the evening we go, still holding on to some of those stronger wind gusts, but notice what happens. They start to die down quite a bit once we get closer to 11 o'clock. Still impressive, 20 to 25 and maybe close to 30 at this point, but overnight, early tomorrow morning, things are finally winding down for us, so getting a little more on the calm side. Showers and a few thunderstorms have shown up but so far today under Defender Radar Network. There you see a band of showers along Interstate 65. And it'll continue to press into the area here, probably within the next couple of hours, impacting the folks across central Kentucky with a little more activity behind it. This is our high resolution model. It takes a snapshot every hour and picks up what's going on in the atmosphere. This gets it in here between 3 and 4 o'clock today, giving us that first push of, push of rain. On the backside where the front is located, that's where you're seeing some of the thunderstorms come together. So that will also make its way across Kentucky as well. We're at 5 o'clock here this evening, and then notice that heavier, more intense. Round likely getting in here around 7 o'clock this evening, at least somewhere there close, and then pushes into eastern Kentucky before it eventually 
completely dies out. But that's the activity that we are tracking out there. It's all because of this, a frontal boundary that's driving through. Behind it, we're already seeing 30 showing up as close as Kansas City. Out ahead of it, we're close to 70 degrees across parts of uh, central Kentucky, and they are there in eastern Kentucky thanks to that nice southerly wind that is just blowing in the warmer air. Here's our seven-day forecast. Breaks all of it down for you. We've got those storms out there today. We get into the upper 40s, low 50s on Friday, and we get into Saturday and Sunday where another warm-up happens, and then another cool down on Monday. Yeah, so right. this is March weather. I keep saying that over and over again. This yeah. is it. This is a perfect picture of it right there, guys. Can't get used to anything, right? You, no, you sure can't. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, if you've ever wondered what is behind the work of art, here's your chance to find out. Details about the Lexington Art League's Curator Conversation next on WKYT. John and I met in law school. Two of our sons work with us every day. Morgan & Morgan is a family business. And we are in the business of helping you when an accident devastates your life. This is what we've done for almost 30 years now. We understand your financial needs and obligations and how the loss of income or unpaid medical bills can be overwhelming. Our family is here for your family. Oh, and just so you know, I'm a grandma now. Morgan Morgan, for the people. I love grocery shopping at Kroger, but sometimes life gets busy. So I use ClickList. It's easy. I just order online. And with thousands of great items and fresh food to choose from. I can get what I want the way I want it. Then pick up my order at the store without ever leaving my car. And for me, that's a game changer. Order online. Pick up curbside at store. We think you're going to love ClickList. Try it now at Kroger.com slash ClickList. The all-new Big M Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is changing the automotive industry in Central Kentucky forever. Introducing lifetime warranty. It doesn't end after 10 years. It doesn't end after 100,000 miles. And it's available at no extra cost. 100% parts. 100% labor. Zero deductible forever. Visit BigMSuperstore.com. Shop the area's largest selection of quality vehicles, all with a lifetime powertrain warranty. Only at the all-new Big M Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Visit BigMSuperstore.com. On that dark and hopeless and forlorn Friday, over 2,000 years ago, a large teardrop fell to the ground from the eyes of God. He was heartbroken as he watched what was being done to his son. There was tremendous anguish, weeping, and hopelessness in the hearts of all of those who knew Jesus. But on Sunday morning, that incredible and glorious and beautiful morning, there was hope fulfilled. Christ had risen and the tomb was empty. Thank you, Father, that on Easter morning, we can celebrate the greatest miracle of all time, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. May we be forever humbly grateful that you taught us to give by the greatest gift of all, the gift of your Son. Mission of Hope wishes you and your family God's blessings this joyous Easter season. Hi, here for our One for Everyone event? Yep, and I brought everyone. Everyone? Kamiko's my BFF, Darren's her boyfriend, Jillian's my sister. She's dating Liam, who used to date Teresa, but they're still friends. Well, Kamiko and Darren could get 0% APR financing, low monthly payments for Jillian, amazing lease deals for Liam, and tons of inventory for his friend, Teresa. Nice. It's the final days with 0% financing on your favorite new Toyotas. Get up to 58 MPG in the fourth generation Prius with leases starting at just $209 a month. Got room for one more? Toyota, let's go places. Welcome back in. It's sure good to have you with us here on WKYT. It's a chance for you to talk with an artist and gain a deeper understanding and appreciation of his work. The Lexington Art League is holding Curator Conversation this Friday. To tell us more about it, we're joined by Lee Eachus, the Development Director at the Lexington Art League. And we welcome you. Glad to have you here today. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Uh, Lee, tell us about this opportunity. You really can be face-to-face -face, uh, with the artist, right? Yeah, actually, one of the collectors uh, of this particular exhibition, Artist Body, will be present as well with the curator of the exhibition, Julian Robeson. So it'll be, you know, a really interesting opportunity to engage directly with the curator to see his thoughts um, behind creating this really international exhibition 
um, and one of the collectors who is, is sort of coming from Cincinnati, and he has mm -hmm. this really unique perspective on the process of collecting his own art. Well, tell us what people are going to find in this exhibition. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a study of the body. So um, similar to what Lexington Art League has done in the past with the nude exhibition that was hugely popular, this is sort of a new arm of that. So we're looking at, um, in this particular exhibition, the artist's perception of themselves um, through the lens of contemporary art. So a lot of it is photography, some of it is drawing, some of it um, is sculpture as well, which is really interesting because it's so conceptual. Um, but it's really just the artist's perspective of themselves um, in this medium and their body. And, and in that photography, sometimes it can be a cell phone picture now. Oh yeah, absolutely, which is, which is really cool because art has evolved so much that we're all sort of artists in our everyday life. Yeah. Um, and it's taking the idea of this self-portrait and the selfie, I guess, um, although a little more artistic than some of us yeah. maybe are able to accomplish and presenting it that way. Uh, tell us a little bit more about this artist. Uh, Julian is actually the former contemporary um, art curator at Louisville Speed Museum. Mm -hmm. um, he's internationally known. He, he grew up in Britain and studied in Austria for a while as well. Um, and uh, with, a, with the opening of, of his galleries all across the country, he's really engaged um, with the Lexington community now and a lot of central Kentucky and across the state. Um, so we're really privileged to have that opportunity and to present such a you know, unique opportunity for individuals to interact with somebody that respected in the arts community. Well, because a lot of times when you go in to see an exhibition, you're looking, yeah. you're really not talking and having that exchange. Sure. That has to be a very special part of it. Yeah, I think sometimes contemporary art people, it, it, comes with its own sort of elitist notions and, and this is one of the ways that we're trying to break down that barrier so that people can see that it, it doesn't matter what the art is about, it's about how it makes you feel and how you respond to that. And, and Julian's perspective and even Michael as a collector can sort of add to that and let you create even more deeper meaning. All right, folks have the opportunity and that's uh, tomorrow evening from 6 until 9 p.m. at the Loudon House. Uh, Five dollars for non-members, I guess members uh, go free. All free. All right, thanks for coming. Oh, Thank you. It. Thank you. Well, are you looking for a new book to read? We have one for you, A Peek Inside On the Run in College Park, coming up on WKYT. I'm Deanne Stevens at Perspectives for Moms Every Day here with Jason Taylor. We are talking mold and mildew. A wet and rainy season has caused us all some problems. You have something to fix it. Right. We got a new system from California Paint called Storm. It has a, a numbered system, so it's very easy to use. You get to clean the surface, and then you kill the mold and mildew, and you have control agents that will keep it from coming back as quickly. This is kind of like dummy proof because it's simple as a step one, two, and three. Folks can come in and get it, take it home, and take care of the problem. Right, and anybody can use it. It's retail or commercial use, mainly on the inside, but you can use it in attics, basements, garages, anywhere where you have mold and mildew. Clearly, it must work because you said you can hardly keep it on the shelves. Folks are coming in and, and using it. Yeah, and being a new system, it's got all the newest technology, so it works really well. All right, check it out at Perspectives or go to MomsEveryDay.com for more info. This time of year, everyone in the Lexington area is excited because they know it's time for the Burke Furniture March Markdown Madness Sale. Slam dunk huge savings up to 60% off in every department. A beautiful home begins at Burke's. Think you might be pregnant? No judgment, no pressure, just help. AssuranceCare.org Ever take a whiff of a smoker's hair? You're smelling contamination that remains after the cigarette is out. Smokers actually emit very harmful toxins from clothing, hair, and skin, even if they no longer smell like it. Think about that and pay attention to everyone who picks up your child. Every day at Cracker Barrel Old Country Store, we serve fresh, made-from-scratch cooking. Our famous breakfast, day or night. And with meals starting at $5.99, our prices are downright comfortable. So stop on by. You're always welcome. We know they're a great value, but to see if Malto Meal cereal tastes as good as they claim, we have assembled a panel of experts. Spoons are up. They are mid-crunch. And... Oh, thumbs! Malto Meal cereal. Thumbs up on great taste. Think for a moment. You don't think twice about having your eyes tested, but what about your hearing? Hi, I'm Marcia Mattingly. At Belltone, we've helped thousands of people lead richer, fuller lives by showing them that they can hear the way they should. At Belltone, a free hearing test can determine if you need hearing help. Call now. You have everything to gain. 50 years and three generations serve in the tri-state with the most trusted name in hearing aids, Belltone.
WKYT's First Alert Weather follows you wherever you go, on TV, online, on your phone, and throughout the day on Rewind 105.5. This time of year, everyone in the Lexington area is excited because they know it's time for the Burke Furniture March Markdown Madness Sale. Slam dunk huge savings up to 60% off in every department. A beautiful home begins at Burke's. Want to be part of the new Big Brother? Yeah! Go to WKYT.com and apply today. Welcome back in. It is very timely, a story of crime, terrorism, and romance set on a college campus, and it explores the relationship between Muslim and Christian students. Author John Elliott is here to talk about On the Run in College Park. Thanks for coming in. Glad to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. What is the book about, essentially? Well, it's about uh, four college students. There are two men and two women. Uh, the two women are uh, first-year students and are rooming together. One's a Muslim and one's a Christian. The two men are upperclassmen, and one is an exchange student from Morocco. And he and uh, two other international students have developed a, a, a company, a nonprofit company, to raise money for an orphanage in Iraq. Mm -hmm. However, they're keeping three-fourths of the money themselves. They're laundering it overseas. They're not paying taxes on it. So they're involved in a little crime circle. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's also a terrorist cell operating in the vicinity. And it's through that nonprofit that they gain access to these other students and uh, influence their lives. And of course, that throws them into uh, confusion and fear. So that's the basic premise of the story. A lot of elements there for an interesting story. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what do you hope that people get from your book? What do you hope they take away from it? Well, first of all, I hope they're entertained. Mm -hmm. You know, fiction writers aren't necessarily sending a message. Um, so I hope they go away with uh, being satisfied that they've read a good book. But I, and when I write, I can't help but throw in some, some meaningful things. And uh, there is in this book uh, a lot of room for uh, personal uh, honor and courage as well as uh, cowardice and fear. These students are just like you and me and I've tried to make them as realistic as possible. And the issues that they're facing are issues that we, we see on your newscast. Uh, very uh, much. Yes. Today and the front pages of our paper. Well, uh, we thank you for coming by, John, and uh, you'll have a book signing coming up uh, next Wednesday, 5 o'clock at the Morris Bookshop. I know you uh, enjoy uh, meeting your readers, and uh, thank you very much for sharing with us. Thank you for Appreciate having me here. Good luck. Look forward to reading it. Thank that you. wind is really kicking up out there this afternoon. Yes, Let's it is. Check with Jim before we go. Yeah, out ahead of this line of showers and even some thunderstorms that are sweeping in, we have seen those, uh, those uh, winds really increase. Gusts 40-plus miles per hour right now. It's all associated with this as it continues to dry into our area. It could be a bit of a bumpy evening, guys, as we make a transition back to some cooler air for tomorrow. All right, we'll stay on top of it. You stay with us here on WKYT for the latest, and thank you for being with us for the new news hour. Your news is always on at WKYT.com. Hope you get out and have a great day, everybody.